Minneapolis voters likely will decide the, the whole world is watching this story. The whole country is watching this story and the whole world is watching this story. As efforts continue mightily to not have a police force in Minneapolis, despite now 45 homicides in the first six months of this year. Minneapolis voters will likely decide the fate of a single police overhaul proposal after three city council members agreed Wednesday to withdraw their plan to avoid confusion at the polls. Two similar proposals asking voters to replace the Minneapolis Police Department with a public safety agency in the wake of George Floyd's death had dominated the conversation in recent months. The plans have drawn national scrutiny and spurred strong reactions in the community. As people wait to see how the city will fulfill a promise to transform public safety amid a racial reckoning. As the city attorney's office cleared the way Wednesday for a political committee's plan, a political committee's plan, not necessarily the city council, so bear with me. As the city attorney's office cleared the way Wednesday for a political committee's plan to land on the November ballot, council member Jeremy Schroeder announced that he and his colleagues wanted to formally withdraw our plan, thus freeing up some of that confusion and making it much easier for the ballot in November. The proposals were similar, but had different language regarding the role that police would play in a new agency. Uh, members of the political committee, yes for Minneapolis, the numeral four, yes for Minneapolis. It's great, let me turn, I apologize. Uh, it's great that uh, there'll be only one ballot question, said Janae Bates, a spokeswoman for Yes for Minneapolis. We certainly want to decrease any inkling of confusion or chaos for folks. And for us, it's just really important for this to be clear and informed by community, making sure that community members are heard every step of the way. The future of the Minneapolis Police Department has become the central issue in the first elections held since Floyd's killing. Some activists argue Floyd's death was evidence that the police department cannot be, re police violence is statistically non-existent. Right. Some activists argue Floyd's death was evidence that the police department can't be reformed and should be replaced. Others argue the proposals amount to little more than a name change and meaningful work can be done without eliminating the department. Council members who wrote the proposal Schroeder, Philippe Cunningham, and Steve Fletcher had signaled in the past that they were open to withdrawing their plan if one pushed by yes for Minneapolis was cleared for the ballot. Yes for Minneapolis is a George Soros funded political action committee. What? Mm -hmm. We've talked about it. Back in February, yeah. they got 500 oh, grand. Oh, that's right. We did talk about it back then. From the Center for an Open Society. I went down that rabbit hole today. A council committee on Wednesday, wait, did I jump ahead? Yes, you did. Oh, here it is. The key difference in these two public safety agencies. Oh, they remove language that gives the mayor complete power over police operations, uh, likely granting council members additional sway over officers. Imagine the uh, these incompetent fools mm -hmm. having control mm -hmm. of the police. The key difference was that the council version said the new department, this is the council version now, this is the one they surrendered. The key difference was that the council version of the ballot question said the new department must employ police. While the yes for Minneapolis version says it would include police if necessary to fulfill the responsibilities of the department. Um. They're, they're well, necessary, um, you idiots. They're necessary 24 hours a day, 364 days, 365 days a year. Yes, the ones that are still willing to do it because they don't have the backing of their oh, own you public Oh, you miserable leaders. louts. That's incredible. They dumped the one that the council mm -hmm. constructed, which called for a police department. But they're going to go with the yes for Minnesota version. So look at what just happened here. We went from being horrified that the activists who were elected in this position, meaning the city council members, 
aren't even making this decision. It's the activists who have not been elected. It's that are unelected now. activists funded by George Soros, Holy Open cow. Society. This city is Outside in so much trouble. Yeah. This city is in so much trouble. Yeah. If both proposals appeared on the ballot, city leaders, I don't know who those would be, these council people, would need to find a way to differentiate them at the polls. In a presentation Wednesday, the city attorney's office suggested using the header, Department of Public Safety, peace, officer, peace officers included if necessary. Could somebody please explain <laughs> to me what makes you think they aren't necessary? Your town is in a free fall. Minneapolis is spiraling out of control. Crime is as high as it's ever been. And you keep toying with this. In the uh, uh, peace officers included, if necessary, to describe the yes for Minneapolis proposal. If there were two questions on the ballot, if only one appeared on the ballot, it suggested Department of Public Safety. The discussion Wednesday signaled that Elected leaders' talks in the coming weeks could focus on whether to include information about state laws that govern police. If the yes for Minneapolis plan passes, the mayor and council members will determine police staffing levels as they vote on future budgets and write ordinances to flesh out details of the new department. Schroeder believes the language... A little bit, Joe. Huh? Could That confuses me a little bit, Joe. In In theory, could... The mayor and council members then under that um, keep keep the amount of police officers the same? I would imagine so, depending how much pushback they receive from uh, the George For uh, Soros people who have unlimited funding. Okay, all right. If the Yes for Minneapolis plan pauses, passes, I'm sorry, the mayor and council members will determine police staffing levels as they vote on future budget. Schroeder believes the language should reflect that state law says some tasks can only be done by police officers. So Schroeder, Schroeder has some, there's one neuron left in his pea brain <laughs> that believes the language should reflect that state law says some tasks can only be done by police officers. We will, yeah, like try to find the murder of, the, of these three children that none of you people care about, mm -hmm. but the homicide detectives do. We will continue to have law enforcement, Schroeder said. We will continue to need law enforcement in the city, and that much is very clear. Councilmember Lisa Goodman pushed back. Oh, 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 I understand comes. that oh. maybe my colleagues would prefer to reinforce the fact that law enforcement isn't just kind of maybe a thing that it will be included, but the petitioners are pretty clear that they only want it if it's necessary representing the city of Minneapolis uh, among them is a woman named Lisa Goodman who is uh, making a statement here that's tantamount to I don't care what this council does I'm 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 aligned with yes for Minneapolis and they don't want this to be a police department which it means yes for Minneapolis means no for cops mm -hmm. Well, it's all going to be about ballot wording and um, the citizens of Minneapolis whipping it out and showing it. Um, um, and the only reason I have hope, I know, Chris, you've given up, and Joe, it seems like you've given up, but <clears throat> the only reason I, I think we might have a chance is because of the lead letter today from Howie Smith, bullying is not activism. Mm -hmm. It seems that he might have a brain in his head, and uh, he gives a couple of bullet pin, uh, points that prove it. I really think Greater Minneapolis, I mean all the residents, everybody showing up, the great unheard in South Minneapolis will shoot this down. I the, guess that's what I'm hoping. And I for. also think that what happened in Uptown really opened some eyes. The city attorney's legal analysis contemplates, se contemplates several ways the city could provide police coverage if elected leaders determine it's necessary. Again, what do you have to be shown to be convinced that it's necessary? People are dying every day. Mm -hmm. The city attorney's legal analysis contemplates several ways the city could provide police coverage if elected leaders determine it's necessary. The city could hire licensed officers as employees or independent contractors. <laughs> or enter into an agreement with another agency to provide licensed peace officer services as needed. 
Well, well, I got hmm. news for you. That's not going to work. It uh, doesn't seem like a, an attractive job, does it? No, does it? no. Why would any self-respecting human being want to be a cop under these circumstances? Uh, somebody tell me, who is it that's going to decide when police are necessary? Right. Well, it's funny you mention that. Um, the mayor and the city council, after the fact of another rash of gunfire, they'll say, well, I think the police are necessary now. I actually, um, well, oh, go ahead, Kenny. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, it, it's got to be determined on a 911 call call uh, basis, right? Call by call. And that would be determined by what? Some sort of supervisor along with dispatch. I have. You know, the people that, am, go ahead, Chris. I have 60 seconds that's going to uh, explain exactly what you're trying to bring up, Kenny. 911, what is your emergency? I need help. There's some people outside. I think they're trying to break into my garage. They're breaking into your home right now. Yeah. Can you send some police? What kind of police? What do you mean, what kind of police? Due to recent policy changes regarding police brutality, we need to ensure that the officers we send out are guaranteed to not be viewed as racist, trigger happy, discriminatory in the event of a violent confrontation. So Can you just send someone to help? I don't know what these people want. My family is here and... Oh my God, they just got into the garage. Please send some help. In order to send help, I need to know what race the perpetrators are, their age, their sexual orientation, what gender they are. Do they have a criminal record? Are they on drugs? If they are armed, and if so, what are they armed with? I don't care about any of that. Send help now. Sir, we cannot send white officers out there if the perpetrators breaking into your home are non-Caucasian. I can't send officers out there with guns if the alleged burglars are not armed. So, I need to know. It wouldn't be so funny. It's not funny because it's too damn true. It's true. Yeah. So it's this paragraph that um, talks about the key differences uh, was that the council version said the new department must employ police, while the Yes Minnesota version said it would include police if necessary to fulfill blah, blah, blah. Do you trust the council's version saying they must employ police? Specifically, will they keep the numbers the same that they were before all of this happened a year and a half ago? I trust the council's version because they are less left than yes for Minnesota. Okay. The Boy, is that a statement. Isn't that something? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, it's too deep to go into. Uh, Why? It's very deep. No, no. What I'm about to say is too deep oh. to go into. Uh, look up uh, Soros's Open Society uh, group or whatever the hell they're called. Uh, they have a completely different view of America. It, it, it In has, much the same way that we were discussing yesterday with Representative Omar? Yeah, it has nothing to do with the uh, law and order. Well, what does it... What do... The, so they prefer crime and mayhem over law and order? Apparently that's how, how Soros, that... Soros has made his money when other people fail. He swoops in and buys undervalued currencies and he benefits from chaos and he's been very instrumental in installing. Okay, okay, well that's understand, uh, we can understand his greedy motives. What about all the meatheads that follow him? I don't, I don't, I don't, well, I don't understand it, which is... How does society We've been wrestling with this for, for years. from lawlessness? Yeah. And, and why would the left, I mean the middle left, the normal left, the people that we've known all of our lives, why would they want less police? I don't think the ones we've known all our lives want less police. I think this is driven by a very concentrated activist core, and it, mm -hmm. would, be, it would be my contention that what's at work here is what we've discovered in other arenas. And what's at work here is that police are an affectation of a flawed founding of the country. George Charles said the following, quote, An open society such as ours is based on the recognition that our understanding of reality is inherently imperfect. Nobody is in possession of the ultimate truth. As the philosopher Karl Popper has shown, the ultimate truth is not attainable even in science. All theories are subject to testing, and the process of replacing old theories with better ones never ends. The ultimate like truth is the ultimate truth is possible to determine in science. Yeah, 
That's what science is for. Cigarettes cause lung cancer. That's a truth. I learned at a very early age that what kind of social system or political system prevails is very important, not just for your well-being, but for our very survival. Because, you know, I could have been killed by the Nazis. I could have wasted my life under the communists. So that's what led me to this idea of an open society. And that is the idea that is motivating me. Mm -hmm. I believe, I believe... What, that what's at work here is that police are just one more dynamic that represents a flawed founding of the country. That leads you to the dreadful conclusion that what ultimately also is under attack is a belief in authority. Yeah. That authority should not be a principle on which uh, American citizens should be subservient to. Teachers. Teachers. You should we're, the, 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 the dual parent household. This shouldn't be a left versus right issue. This should be those of us that are in favor, uh, both sides, of uh, being protected and, and needing law enforcement against whatever Soros' group is doing to us. The, well, this I shouldn't think, be left versus right. I think that citizens of Minneapolis, good Lord, you, you've got to vote this charter question down. Because you, you will then be opening the door to you don't know what. You don't know what. You'll be opening the door to that facetious 911 call we just played. Yeah. That's what you'll be opening the door to. Mm -hmm. So do you believe that years and years and years of Democratic leadership in the city of Minneapolis is what led to this? Yes, and I believe that's true. The closer you get to the country's tallest buildings in Portland, San Francisco, Chicago, uh, Minneapolis. The White House. <laughs> The, I've always uh, thought it was more complicated than that, but I can't put that definition into, into words because I see that used a lot when one of the bonehead city council members goes out on Twitter, <laughs> um, Philippe Cunningham, and, and you read the pushback and it's all it's always basically the same. Years and years and years of Democratic leadership have got you into this uh, position you're in and you're only making it worse. Well, the problem is there's nothing wrong with classical liberalism. Uh, right. Classical liberals uh, are not destructive people. You mean the no, JFKs of the world? Right. Well, JFK is a rock rib Republican compared yeah, to the no. current crowd. F further left than JFK. So, but classical liberals are are uh, solid American citizens. Right. I know many. I know many. Yeah. <laughs> you do on what? A, what? On, what, a, where, what's on a national stage, Joe, I think of Brett Weinstein or Stein mm -hmm. and his wife uh, Heather uh, Hying. They were classical liberals, and now because they're pushing back against the far, far left, they're considered righties, and they are not <laughs> conservative at all. But it's the far left that's driving this. We've been calling it the mystery. Mysterians are driving this. Mysterians are driving an attempt to remake this country in their eyes because they do not accept its principal, fundamental founding as acceptable yeah. to them. That right. everything that has flowed from the founding of the country is found to be flawed. Right. And everything that happened since then is flawed. You know, name, like, like we're seeing with the name changes for lakes, schools, streets, police, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, yeah. Streets. Trees, math, language, math, English, math, yeah. the solar system, <laughs> solar system, yeah, which is trees. funny Did because you trees. I got trees in there. Well, I okay, can get good. you a tree. <laughs> but I'm sorry, you're you're not allowed to have one. You're a brown person. <laughs> God Almighty! By the way, I just thought it was ironic that the one speaking up, uh, Schroeder, his is Ward 11, the most southern ward, so, uh, south and central. Borders Richfield and mm -hmm. Lindale and uh, 34th. I hope you're enjoying your summer. Well, despite I was the, until this conversation. Despite this show. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're putting my.